Hey, Shantasone, back again. We talked about spiritual practices, hormones, infaceuticals. Now we're going to move on to the end, which is nutrition. Now, if there was a, a, a hormonal healing pyramid, kind of like the food pyramid, I would put nutrition at the bottom, meaning it's the most important and the biggest of the topics. And we know, obviously, it's nutrition is one of those things that we know it's better for us if we eat better. But for a lot of us, we don't know exactly what that means or how to do it or where to start. Again, I'm not putting this out there as me being the all seeing eye because I have a lot of friends that are great at this. But I do know from working with the tens of thousands of women that I've worked with, that there are certain types of nutrition, I believe, that help more with hormone imbalances. And some are different for different categories as well. So if you're estrogen dominant or you're one of the queens, you want to probably stay away from too much phytoestrogens or things like soy because you're already estrogenic. You don't want to be adding something like isoflavones that could make you more estrogenic. Um, a lot of women will uh, talk about what if I have low testosterone? How do I boost my testosterone? Well, we want to focus on foods that are more concentrated on zinc and boron, um, magnesium, and higher protein content because we want to uh, build more muscle. And a good rule of thumb is um, a one pound of pro one one gram of protein per pound of body weight. If you're in Europe or Australia, you can convert that to kilograms, um, but I would use 2.2. So it's 2.2 times the number of kilograms you are. Um, so that being said, focus on protein intake. And for some people, they can't do whey protein because they have a lactose intolerance or they're trying to stay away from dairy. Well, there's other things out there now. There's pea protein and there's other types of animal proteins. Huge debate right now as I'm recording this on different types of uh, dietary recommendations from keto to carnivore to um, my friend Joel Kahn is vegan, uh, he's a cardiologist, and, and everybody in my opinion has valid points. I personally, for my body, if I eat less carbohydrates, if I eat more ketosis, I will lose a lot of weight pretty quickly. Like I think I've lost 25 pounds in a month before doing that. But it's difficult and it's not something that I like to do long term because I like to eat carbs. I'm, I'm Italian. I want to have my oil and my bread every once in a while. But you also have to watch what you eat and you have to, you know, if you're, wa if you're wanting to lose weight, I'm still a firm believer, as some may not want to hear this, but calories in, calories out. And what calories in and what calories out? A great example is the other day, I decided I wanted to eat some peanuts. So I grabbed a handful of peanuts and I looked at the can and it said 170 calories. And I was like, great, this is probably a serving. But I just bought a food scale. So I went and I weighed my handful of peanuts. Turns out that it was two servings of peanuts, not one, which is 340 calories. So you can imagine if you were to do that four or five times a day, underestimating what you're eating, that that could add to weight gain. So I think we underestimate what we're eating. And I think we also overestimate the calories we're burning while we exercise, because I think some of those devices actually give us more of a caloric burn than we actually got, but that's neither here nor there. So what do I usually recommend for, if I was to say overall, an overarching theme for my practice and for hormones. And this isn't for everybody, and it's not necessarily long-term. And I always uh, recommend going to a great nutritionist or dietitian or somebody like that that can work with you on your macros and how to eat. But I think the things that work good for a lot of my patients are intermittent fasting, and that can be anything. That can be a 12-12 fast, 16-8 fast, and uh, eight, 16 fast, whatever works for you. But I find that if a lot of women can do the 16, eight fast, where you don't have to eat after 8 p.m. and you don't eat again until noon the next day, um, 
that is a great way to get your body kind of get your give your GI tract a rest, give the bacteria a rest. Um, you're not eating calories, so your body has to burn fat for fuel around that 12th hour. Um, and then if you can eat lower carb when you eat and try to get your carbs mostly from vegetables and maybe throw in a little fruit here and there um, as a treat, that's a good way to kickstart some, some weight loss. Uh, those two things work really well in my practice. Now keep in mind, somebody that works, that might work good for someone with PCOS, but the saboteur is somebody that might actually need more calories. And I don't know if I would necessarily want her to be fasting for a long period of time like that because her body's already kind of run down and in a little bit more of a need. So to tell her not to eat probably wouldn't work. So my point being is you don't, it's not just a one size fits all. And it's the same what I talked about with keto. Uh, keto is fine, it works for my body type, may not work for yours. You know, also if you're a smaller person, um, you know, 25% of the women that have PCOS are actually thin, they're not overweight. Would I want to put them on the same dietary recommendations? No, everybody's a little different. So it can't just be a one size fits all. And if you look at the diets that are currently out there now or the nutrition plans, keto, carnivore, um, there's uh, you know high fat, low carb. There's so many different things out there. Honestly, I believe that we should just eat a reasonable diet. We should watch our caloric intake. We should move our bodies. But if your hormones are off, sometimes it's harder to lose weight, even if you're doing all of the right things. So nutrition plays a part. We might have to go into some caloric deficit. We might want you to eat more. Um, I, I think working with a nutritionist, again, working with a nutritionist or a dietitian that can kind of work with you on your macro content, your fats, your proteins, your carbs, what works for you, zigzag your calories a little bit sometimes, and maybe just make it more fun for you to meal prep and stuff like that long term is probably the best plan again nutrition the biggest piece of the puzzle probably for some one of the more difficult pieces of the puzzle but it, not to get confused and to get distressed over it it's a work in progress and you're gonna have days where maybe it doesn't work it's long term so with that let's combine it with everybody else's favorite topic and talk about exercise